Hello everybody, Backdoor Podcast fans. We are here for another one-to-one chat with the personality of basketball related players, coach and stuff like that. As you can see, uh, I have a big, big guest today. Uh, it's a pleasure to have Yanis Feropoulos. Welcome, coach. Thank you very much for the invitation. Congratulations for your uh, nice uh, podcast that you have and uh, I wish the best for the new season. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let's start with uh, something uh, light. Uh, you, you, uh, you were at Pauk uh, and you are used to make the training camp uh, in Valtellina. As Italian, we like Valtellina, Bormio, stuff like that. Why did you choose that place? I remember 1997, it was my first year when we, with Pau, we, we came to Bormio. Um, it was a very famous place for uh, teams to participate in the camp there. And uh, for us, it was a great opportunity to play against uh, good teams from all over Europe. And uh, it's a great opportunity for any team to have good conditions uh, to practice. Uh, pre-season, but also to have uh, a lot of games to play with good teams that they gather all together there. And you have uh, uh, plenty of options to play uh, pre-season games. Great. Uh, and uh, obviously for a professional coach, uh, uh, there's not a favorite team. Uh, every team uh, you you coach uh, probably are the best, uh, but uh, I know you have uh, uh, a favorite team. I don't know if I'm pro- the pronunciation is good, but Calamaria is uh, your favorite team, uh, 360 degrees, uh, as I said. Calamaria is my hometown. Uh, it's uh, an area in Thessaloniki, and uh, I play basketball here. Uh, and I start to coach here in Calamaria 11 years. So you can understand that I was um, raised uh, in this club. And this is my first club where I started. And, uh, but uh, I want to say that uh, all clubs that I work, I'm really connected. I love all the clubs that I work. I, how you can forget all these uh, great moments that you, uh, that you spend and uh, all these happiness and sadness that you live you know in each team that you coach uh, it's part of your life you cannot um, say that let's say I prefer one team than the other all the teams that I coach so far I love them and I, I first of all I don't regret that I coach them and secondly I'm very happy that I I coach this all these teams that uh, you, I have great memories and mainly good memories uh, from all of them. So I love all of them. Absolutely. Now we can start about uh, talking about uh, basketball. In uh, this uh, period, uh, like NBA, there's a players association. NBA is an association. Uh, in Euroleague, there's a players association. But you are the vice president of uh, head coaches board. And uh, we don't talk too much about it. Uh, I think uh, is. Uh, an important thing for you. You are vice president, and in for this reason, what are your duties and what are the goal of this board association? Uh, thank you very much that you mentioned this. Uh, it's true that uh, now, last years, we try to to organize the Euroleague head coaches uh, in a board, and it started in Badalona. Uh, 2019 with uh, coach Obradovic as president and uh, coach uh, Pablo Lasso as vice president and us being uh, uh, the new members that uh, we found uh, the board and from from that moment till now we are trying to get involved all our colleagues that they work in Euroleague but from this year uh, we started with coach Itudis who is the president uh, we started to expand our uh, our board and we want uh, to include now all coaches that uh, they work as assistant coaches also in Euroleague, but the head coaches of EuroCup and the EuroCup assistant coaches. So all these coaches are very welcome and we want, we want them to join 
our uh, union and our uh, board. Uh, so to be part of this uh, board, why to join this board? Uh, this board and uh, what is the as you ask? What is the meaning of this board? First of all, we want to establish our presence in in European basketball as coaches. We want to have a powerful voice because, as you know, we are the leaders of each team. Coaches are the leaders of the team and um, they have to decide a lot of things about uh, a team, a basketball team. Not only basketball, that's obvious, but also other teams, how you need to build a team, how you need to create uh, the conditions around the team and all this stuff together, of course, with the board of each team. But uh, for us to, to be together and to have a, a common voice in, in Europe, uh, we decided to make this uh, board that uh, will help all the coaches uh, to express their opinion, express their voice and to influence, influence with a positive way our sport. We believe that our sport uh, uh, is uh, running not uh, great moments because of what uh, have happened uh, with the um, uh, Euroleague and FIBA situation uh, that uh, we have players that they get injured, play a lot of games, trips, uh, etc. etc. So it's a new uh, era in Euroleague and we have to be present in all these decisions. And that's why it's very important our voice. And for this reason, we call and from this podcast, I would like to call all our colleagues from uh, Euro, EuroCup head coaches and the assistant coaches from uh, EuroLeague and EuroCup to join us. Uh, to finish, I want to say that uh, after we complete all this uh, uh, new direction, let's say, to include everybody from, uh, from EuroLeague and EuroCup, all the coaches, we want to expand in the near future uh, also for all coaches of Europe that they want to join our uh, our union and uh, this would be like a European, total European uh, coaches board and uh, I hope that um, uh, as many coaches as uh, they can, uh, we will be, they will be in, uh, in our board and we will have a very strong voice. And uh, you mentioned uh, FIBA and uh, EuroLeague. Do you think this board could have uh, a strong voice uh, and uh, try to help uh, uh, future cooperation? In your opinion, there would be a future cooperation between the uh, EuroLeague uh, and EuroCup and the FIBA uh, because there are a lot of problems uh, about schedule, about uh, players who play exactly. with the, the team, the club uh, and uh, the national team or the club or the national team. Is there a chance to uh, sit in one table uh, and uh, talk, about, uh, talk about it for the future and uh, cooperate? Of course, of course. As a uh, Euroleague head coach is board, uh, our goal is to unite uh, both uh, 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 parties and we want to, to, to combine all of them uh, and to, to make them uh, work together and to uh, create, let's say, the conditions that uh, will solve this problem uh, because we are in favor of basketball as sport. Uh, we are uh, coaching in Euroleague, but... Uh, Maybe we will coach next next uh, next year in another league. Doesn't matter. Or let's say some of us are also coaching in the national teams. So you understand that we are in favor of basketball as a sport, and we would like to uh, unite uh, both par parties. And uh, we want to in be involved in favor of basketball to find a solution. And because we are specialists. And because we have a lot of uh, colleagues, um, uh, mo even more experienced than me, that they are uh, working more years in, in the top level and they have, we have our experiences, we have our knowledge, I think this is important as specialists to sit uh, together with the, both parts and to organize uh, the way how we will solve these problems. You, you started coaching uh, at the very young age, uh, I think uh, at 21, you started uh, in Apollo, you win the third division, then you stay at Pauk for seven years. And uh, eight, eight, uh, yes. I think... Uh, eh? Eight years in Pauk, eight. 
Eight years, eight years, okay. And uh, I think you have uh, a lot of uh, things you learn, you improve as an assistant coach, you started your career as a coach. Uh, what do you remember most about that period? I was very lucky that I work, uh, first of all, in Apollo Calamargas with the young kids and I start to learn and I start to grow as a coach. Uh, Uh, improving uh, very young kids. The, this school, uh, working with young kids, uh, is very important and a lot of experiences um, helping me even now in the professional sport. After that, when I, as you said, I went in Pauk for eight years, I was assistant coach. And in total, I was 11 years assistant coach in, in first league of Greece and Euroleague, of course, with some teams like Pauk, like Olympiacos later on as an assistant coach. And uh, I had the chance to cooperate with a lot of uh, top level coaches that uh, they gave all the knowledge and the experience uh, to, to me through, through the teaching in, in our teams. And um, to me, it was very important that I learn from different schools, the ex-Yugoslavian school, the Greek school, let's say, the coaches of, of Greek school. Uh, the co coach from Lithuania, like Jonas Kazlauskas, that he helped me a lot. And uh, I have the chance to, to learn from a lot. Pini Gerson and Zvika Ser from Israel uh, and this uh, kind of uh, basketball. So you, you, you understand that I have a, a lot of influences from and a lot of ideas from different schools, basketball schools that uh, after that I filter everything and I create my own uh, stuff, my own philosophy and my own way how to coach and about ideas on the court. You were uh, a video coordinator, and uh, but uh, some years ago, when uh, no laptops, no internet connection uh, every day, and uh, I read around, uh, you could uh, only sleep on the airplane because the night was fu were fully dedicated for the video video stuff, uh, trying to make a clip, uh, prepare the the game, uh, the game. You for know, the team and you stuff know like a that. lot of things. You know a lot of things. So, all, <laughs> although you are from Italy, congratulations. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, it was very difficult, I suppose. Uh, what the difference you see is quite simple to know, but uh, what difference uh, there were between uh, your uh, when you were assistant coach and today? I think it's more and more simple today. I will tell you two stories about that. First of all, when I was in Pauk, I went in 1997. I started to work with two videos. There were no laptops, but they were not also desktops to work with video. Then uh, working with two videos, you understand that it was one to play, the other to record uh, small clips. And then all these small clips that you put in one video cassette VHS uh, tape to put it in order in another, another one more time. So you understand that it was very... Uh, difficult, a lot of time needed. And as you said, I didn't sleep. So I went to the board of PAUK. I heard that uh, now new, new technology with computers that you can, uh, uh, you can plug your uh, computer with uh, a VHS uh, video player and recorder. So this is how I started to work with the desktop. And uh, this helped me a lot. Pauk helped me in that moment. Uh, we bought this uh, computer and then uh, it was more simple. After my first two, three years that I worked with two videos, then I continued to work with uh, a computer. And the other uh, thing I want to say is um, when I was in Pauk, um, I started with Zvika Surf and uh, we play Euroleague. It was not named Euroleague that, that moment. It was uh, uh, European... Uh, champion of champions, uh, it was called. But uh, we're supposed to play against a team from Porto, or Porto, from Portugal. So head coach uh, Zvika Serf told me, you scout uh, Porto and uh, you need to, we play first, first game day. How to scout Porto, you understand? Uh, we, the, there was no internet. We didn't have any information about uh, other teams. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I called the Greek embassy in Lisbon, 
And I tried to find somebody to help me with uh, sports. So there was a, a man there that uh, he, was in, uh, he was a fan. And I told him, please, uh, if you read the, in the newspapers that there is a game of Porto, let me know. And I call him every day, every day for 10 days in a row. So one day he told me there is a Super Cup game Porto against, uh, I don't remember the other team. <laughs> And uh, I, I, I flew, I went the game, I, I, I saw the game, I recorded and I came back. And with this game, I made the scouting for, uh, for Pauk. We went first game day after one week to play. We won and it was very, I was very happy because it was very hard and very dis- difficult to, to find the information. Now, as you asked me about the comparison, now you have everything uh, done from other companies, not only from you. Let's say there are companies that they, and they, they are uh, uh, sites that you can find all, all the information through the internet. You can get games, you can get, get uh, clips cut already. Uh, you, you, can ha- you can get statistics and you, you have everything. Uh, it's more easy now to create all the stuff. So now I believe that uh, the new generations needs to be more... Uh, Uh, to the point and they need to find the details now because now you can search more about details you can find more about the details what the opponent is doing how to play against them and all this stuff seems to be incredible because uh, <laughs> since we are talking about 15 60 70 years ago but uh, it's it's not this case it's incredible yes uh, i have to start with uh, your higher level career uh, in uh, euroleague in particular i have to ask you about uh, probably the most painful night uh, of your career as assistant coach of Seska Mosca when uh, uh, Olympiakos, like a sliding doors, uh, make an incredible comeback and win uh, the EuroLeague in uh, probably the most incredible game uh, I've ever seen. Uh, I ask you, uh, do you realize... Uh, what happened in that night uh, and uh, uh, how can you deal with it uh, in, uh, after that uh, incredible loss? Look, as the game uh, continued to the end, uh, you remember that it was 12 minutes, 18 points for us, 12 minutes to the end. We tried to keep the, the difference, to be safe. But I think the, it, they happened uh, so many things that uh, changed the game. One of these, let's say, 30 things that happened in a row to lose the game, if one was not like happened, uh, we could win. Um, of course, it was very painful, as you said. And uh, it's something that, uh, you know, you never forget how uh, you lose that game. We lose that game. Uh, always you have it uh, in your heart and uh, you know in sports a lot of things are uh, let's say everything can happen a lot of wins a lot of uh, losses uh, but uh, you know to lose like that the final of Euroleague having the, a great team it's not easy and it was not easy the first month to overcome this uh, bad loss And uh, for the sliding doors I've already mentioned, uh, you uh, start coaching, uh, you as a rookie coach in EuroLeague, you reach the final, the only one of two coaches could reach the final uh, of the EuroLeague at their first season. Uh, you made uh, an incredible job in that years of Olympicos tenure. Uh, What was the secret uh, about uh, that team uh, at, and uh, what do you bring to that team for make uh, a big improvement and stay at uh, the top possible level? Yes, um, Olympiakos uh, had uh, two things when I went in 2015 to coach them. First of all, the knowledge and the know-how because they have won the EuroLeague uh, twice uh, in the previous years. And from that uh, moment, they, they knew how to work, let's say, w- with all the things around the conditioning coach, the, on the court, let's say, they, they create very good conditions uh, for rehabilitation and uh, for, for the players uh, and uh, all this stuff. 
From the other side, uh, the second that they had it was a, a very good uh, core of players, Greek players that uh, were the best uh, Greek players uh, of the nation. And uh, they were, most of them, they were uh, national team players. So having a core of, uh, of local players, uh, to me, is very important uh, to build uh, uh, with them uh, as a base and bringing good Americans to bring a, a, a great uh, group of players. Uh, what I brought uh, to Olympiacos, in that moment, uh, they were a little down psychologically. I started to coach them and I, what I wanted to bring was, uh, let's say, um, the winning mentality. I, I think they have lost it. They had already two losses uh, when I went and, uh, and uh, we start to to win, we start to we didn't lose, let's say, a game, a single game in a regular season of Greek League. We we start to to win in Euroleague, and uh, I think the most crucial moment uh, to go to the final four was uh, the semi-final against uh, Barcelona, when we play without the home court advantage in Barcelona, the first two games, and we won uh, the second one. It was the first time that Olympiacos ever won in Barcelona. And uh, it was very hard and very difficult uh, to win there. We won the first game and then we came back in uh, Piraeus. And we won the third and the fourth game and we went to the final four. I, th I think that was the most crucial, uh, pa uh, let's say, moment. The second game in Barcelona when we break the home court advantage from them. And then in the final four, as you remember, we won uh, Ceska. Again, uh, we we did a great comeback. It was not easy, and uh, but we play against Real Madrid in Madrid in their home court, and they had 20 years to get it. So you understand, and they had very good team, of course. This is the most important. But they had excellent team, but uh, everything was very difficult uh, for the. Uh, second team for the competitor uh, of the Real Madrid, whoever uh, would be, uh, because um, as I said, uh, they had great uh, team. They had uh, they play in their home court, and um, all the environment. Let's say 20 years not being a champion, they play in the previous years the finals, and they didn't succeed. So it's like uh, the destiny for them to take it in that moment. Absolutely. And uh, you've coached uh, not only in EuroLeague, but in the domestic league, in the Greek league. Uh, there's uh, Olympikos, uh, uh, Panathinaikos, uh, uh, great derby with a lot of history. The crowd were amazing uh, in uh, every, every game. Could you tell us uh, one or two uh, stuff uh, happened, uh, particular stuff happened uh, during uh, that derby? It it's probably a madness for the, the Athens and the Greek fan in general. Uh, what are the two best moments uh, in, uh, in your career at Olympicos uh, regarding the derby? I will say I, I will not put, I will say two moments, but not as a as a single game, as a series. Let's say in my first year, uh, 2015. We won the championship 3-0. First time ever Olympiacos won 3-0 with zero uh, wins of Panathinaikos. And in that year, we made uh, uh, five, five wins, 5-0 we had uh, with me. Uh, I mean, the two regular season games and, and the three finals. And that was very interesting, very unique. And the next year, 2016, again, we took the championship 3-1. Uh, in in Oaka in the home court of uh, Panathinaikos, again first time uh, ever uh, Olympiacos won in Oaka the championship. So you understand that uh, these two back-to-back -back, uh, championships were uh, really really wonderful moments for us. Uh, that uh, we did something that uh, was very unique, and uh, these are unforge unforgettable uh, moments. These two moments that, as you mentioned. Uh, are uh, to me very important between uh, Olympiacos and Panathinaikos uh, series. And uh, the, the end of uh, your tenure in uh, Olympiacos was uh, a mutual decision, was uh, a decision by the team to go in forward in another way, is your decision. Uh, after a lot of success, uh, what is the turning point? 
I think uh, it was uh, that my, it was my fourth year, and I think that uh, both parts uh, wanted uh, something new. Let's say myself personally as a coach, but also the team. I think that uh, uh, we wanted to. It, it was about time uh, to, you know, to continue with different ways. We had uh, always great. Uh, uh, great relationship uh, with everybody, with the board, with the owners, with the players. But, you know, sometimes after four years to coach four years in the in every team in a top level, it's not easy and you need uh, um, new new blood, let's say, both parts. So I think it was for both good that we split and uh, everybody move on. And after a great crowd like Olympiakos One, you go and coach another incredible crowd like the Tel Aviv One. You coach Maccabi, you take over Maccabi in a bad situation and bring the team uh, nearly to the playoff. Uh, what team you, you found when you go to Maccabi and what did you and obviously the team, the players and the staff, did you change in that season? Yes, uh, after Olympiacos I was very honored to coach Maccabi Tel Aviv. Uh, it's a traditional uh, European uh, competitor for the uh, final four and the first position, the champion the championship uh, and uh, I want to say that uh, uh, in my first year as you said uh, we nearly reached uh, the playoffs but in my second year we qualified to the playoffs but unfortunately it was that year that uh, COVID came and the EuroLeague stopped so as you remember FS was first and they were um, the team that affected most of the stop of EuroLeague because of the pandemic and the second uh, team that uh, was helped more was Maccabi because Maccabi mathematically before the season started before the uh, regular season started at the moment at the point that Euroleague stopped we were already qualified in the playoffs but we didn't play uh, what I changed uh, from the beginning was uh, first of all the psychology because the team had some losses in Euroleague and psychologically they were not very good but uh, tactically I I, I push the team in two directions. One is to play faster on offense because we, we want, I wanted to take advantage of the athleticism of the players. And the second thing that what I've done was uh, to play more solid uh, defense. And uh, with these two improvements, I think that uh, we did a great job. As you said, in the first is my first year. It was not my, all, the, all the season. I went November in Maccabi. But uh, till the, the end of the regular season, we fought uh, till the end to go to the playoffs. Unfortunately, we didn't qualify for one win. Uh, but the second year, we qualified, as I said, and again, we were unlucky that we didn't play the playoffs. Then um, the team was affected from the, from the pandemic. We cut down the budget. We didn't have uh, the season tickets the first year. And the third year, my third year, the first year, I mean, with pandemic. And after the pandemic finished, uh, we had season tickets. But again, you know, we balanced a team that was not um, with good chemistry. And that's why I left uh, on February uh, my last season uh, from Maccabi. I want to say that in Maccabi, I, I lived... Uh, Uh, great moments uh, with the team, with the club, uh, with the owners. Uh, I have great uh, memories. I love the team. I love everybody there. And um, the love that, and mainly I love the fans that uh, we have a unique uh, uh, relationship. Uh, the fans love me. And uh, what I've lived in Maccabi, I think it was very special uh, for a foreigner like me. It was the, the question I want to ask uh, because the Maccabi fans are probably uh, the best in the world. Uh, they make a lot of noise. Probably you play in sixth against five when you play, uh, when Maccabi plays at home. Uh, what do you remember most? Is there a, a situation, uh, a things uh, or, uh, or whatever you remember the most about uh, the love the fan has to the team? 
I have a lot of stories to say, you know, about the fans, the relationship uh, of myself and fans, with the fans, you know, the love that they showed to me on the road and uh, everywhere when I was walking or, uh, you know, inside the court was uh, amazing. You know, I, I've lived uh, moments that uh, uh, I, I believe that, that I will not live again this type of moments. And uh, that's why always I have them in my heart. One special uh, moment that I can remember was when I extend my contract with the club. Uh, we play against Panathinaikos and uh, all the fans, they raise a banner with my face and they sing uh, my name uh, on the court. And not only once, but they sing my name a lot of games and that was very special for me. And I thank them from my heart. Uh, talking about the EuroLeague uh, right now, uh, there's a lot of talks and rumors about uh, Dubai, team in Dubai, Final Four in Dubai. Uh, nothing uh, happens in this season in the nearly future. But do you think could be an improvement for the league, for the players, for uh, the business side? Uh, what do you think about this situation and the, the economic and uh, and future in general for the EuroLeague? As you know now, basketball is organized more uh, professional, uh, with a more professional way. And um, I think that uh, business is also part of the sport. And that's why I think it's very important uh, for the continuity of the sport and the extension uh, of the sport to have a new directions. And Dubai is one of these uh, options that uh, can give something extra to the sport and to the championship of EuroLeague. And I think that um, if we organize it well and if we have good uh, organization to the trips and to the, because it's a little more far than other destinations, uh, then we, for sure it will be for the good of the sport. And I think that um, All these uh, ideas are very important for the continuity and the improvement of uh, our sport in the new modern uh, uh, years that we are living. Uh, coaching in EuroLeague as a professional in, in particular, but uh, is uh, so difficult because uh, there's not only the, the court, uh, the X's and O's, but uh, there are pressure from nearly everything. The results, the team, uh, the team needs, uh, the players, uh, the agents. Uh, I think it's hard to deal with it. Uh, what's, uh, what's your tactic for dealing with this? Uh, a lot of pressure from uh, uh, various sides. First of all, I like to live under pressure because I live under pressure, my own pressure. I have my own pressure to myself and uh, this, is, this pressure is bigger than all the other pressures <laughs> from each other part of the sport. But, um, you know, when you coach, it's not only in EuroLeague what you said, you need to deal with uh, journalists, with fans, with uh, media, with social media, with uh, all these parameters uh, around. And uh, it's not only in EuroLeague, uh, but I think that the most important thing is to be yourself and to be balanced as a personality, uh, to know what you want to do, to do your, uh, your, um, your things and your stuff with your uh, criteria that you believe that uh, the team will succeed and not to be influenced uh, from any other part that is trying to interfere your job. I think this is the most important and this is what I have done so far and I will continue to do. The last question is hard. You have to think about that because uh, it goes throughout all of your career. Uh, if you can name uh, five players uh, you have coached uh, with, who improved the most uh, under your coaching, uh, no matter what the team uh, situation, championship, the five players you've coached uh, and uh, Uh, the best five uh, about improving their game? Look, uh, I think we have to divide the question <laughs> to help <laughs> because it's a difficult question. Five best players and five players maybe that I, I improve them. Because let's say oh. I coach Panoulis, one of the best players. 
I don't believe that I improved him a lot. What I gave him, yeah. I gave him confidence. I think that uh, Vasilis Billy no, knew that uh, when I coached him, I trusted him, and even in a bad day, I knew that he could help the team. One of the best players is Panulis. Uh, one of the best players was Stojakovic, that I coached him in uh, in uh, Pauk. Uh, but uh, I cannot uh, say that only five, because let's say when I was in Ceska, I coached Hriapa, uh, I coached Kirilenko, I coached uh, Zved. And when I was in national team of Greece, I coached uh, Alvertis. Uh, I coached uh, uh, Diamandidis, I coached uh, Papalukas. I had a lot of great players, great names. I cannot uh, point to just to five. Uh, and then in Maccabi, uh, in Olympiacos, I coached Prindesis. In Maccabi, I coached uh, Denny Avdia, that he's uh, now in NBA. So maybe this is a player that I helped him to improve. Also, Jovel Zusman, he was young. Uh, I put him to play 18 years old. Uh, 18 years old, I put to play Papa Petru and uh, Agravanis in Olympiacos. They play the semi final. Uh, of Euroleague, 18 years old. Always I like to work with young uh, players. I, I put a 18 years old uh, Nikos Papas to play in Colossos Rodos. Uh, and then he, 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 he was named national team of Greece players, player. So you understand that uh, in, in, in all these years, I helped some players, not because of me, but because they, they had the talent. And I like to work with young players and I want to, to give them the court and to give them, you know, if they are hard workers, if they are uh, working good, if they, are, have the good, they have good mentality. And then they, they, they have the backing from my side to, to play and I'm trying to help them and to improve the game. From the other side, I coach some players that they are already legends and they were legends. So I cannot point to five or to ten. I, I got so many. I'm so happy that uh, I, I met all these players that I mentioned and a lot of them that I forget. Sorry that I forget them. Uh, but uh, I was very lucky that I coached uh, top level teams. And uh, with this way, I met uh, top level players that, uh, you know, it, I, I'm very happy that uh, I coached them. And uh, a lot of times I can say that I'm very honored that uh, I coach this type of players. You mentioned that probably a roster for a dream team uh, <laughs> in uh, one minute and a half. It's, uh, it's yes. incredible to her <laughs> to, to hurt some players like that uh, in... Uh, Scotty Wilbeck in, in my country, let's say I forget him, Scotty. Scotty Wilbeck and Absolutely. a lot of players uh, from US, from Europe, uh, from Israel, from everywhere. Uh, Omri Kaspi. Uh, so big legend in NBA 10 years. You know, I have so many good players uh, at my side that I'm, I'm full and I'm so happy with emotions uh, coaching them. Amare Studemeyer, let's say, I coach Amare. You understand? If I start to think, I can think, I cannot point only in five players. I cannot stay. We can start now at finish at midnight, probably. Yes. <laughs> Uh, coach, uh, thank you so much for your time, for your answer, for your kindness. Uh, it's uh, well appreciated uh, and uh, I, I wish you the best luck uh, for your future. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very happy that uh, I was here with you and congratulations from what you are doing and good luck. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Bye.